Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We continue learning Tomer de Bora, the Under the Palm Tree, written by Rabbi Moshe Cordovero de Ramak, in which he talks about the 13 attributes of mercy of God, eh, according to Mika, the prophet Mika. And we're learning the eighth attribute today, which says, He suppresses our sins. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in his in, 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 in immense mercy, behaves with this attribute regarding Israel. And so it is the secret of suppression of sin. It, it, a mitzvah, a mitzvah blossoms upwards. When a person does a mitzvah, this mitzvah goes up and it breaks, it breaks through in ascending without limit until it enters before Hashem. So a mitzvah we know is like an eternal, you're creating eternity when you're doing a mitzvah, when you're doing something that Hashem desires from you. You're creating eternity and it has no bounds. It's like really soars up and it goes directly to the, to the light of God <clears throat> where, where, where it unites with, the, with Hashem. So sins, in contrast, are not allowed entrance into this, this higher chamber. Rather, he suppresses them. So they will not enter as it is written. Evil will not dwell with you. This is in Tehillim 5. Evil will not dwell in your dwelling place. This is in Shabbat 149b. Does the sin does not enter inside. So for this reason, mitzvahs are not rewarded in this world. Like, there's no reward for a mitzvah here. There's no way that Hashem can pay a person his good deed in this world because a mitzvah is something spiritual and the world is a material world. So there's no amount of materiality in this world that can ever repay a mitzvah. And the way that Hashem repays a mitzvah is when a person passes from this world in 180 years, whatever he has achieved in this world, according to his mitzvot, that's where he's gonna come up to. And, um, and it says that the reward is to ba bask in the rays of glory. That it's like you're connected to the, to the glory of God. And, um, and uh, it says that when a person does a mitzvah, uh, in the, in, in, he sees the effects of this mitzvah once he's not in this world, it's like, for example, I teach this class to you. I have no idea who's watching it. I have no idea how many people see it, how many people benefit from it. So in 180 years, when I'm up there, I'm gonna be able to see every person it touched, every person that went out and did something good because they saw this class. And all this ripple effect of my, of my teaching this Torah class, will be accredited to me. This is what it means, the, the reward of a mitzvah. So it's huge, because you never know. It can be even generations after uh, the person you helped. Generations later on are benefiting from your kindness. So, so it says that, that for these reasons, mitzvot are not rewarded in this world because they stand before Hashem. How could Hashem dispense from what is before him spiritual reward in this physical world. So all the pleasures of this world cannot equal, can ne never come to reward a mitzvah. Doesn't matter how big a yacht, how big the house, how much clothes, nothing is gonna ever be able to compensate the, the act of a mitzvah. And so this explains how Hashem does not accept bribery. For example, Hashem does not say, he did 40 mitzvot and 10 sins. 30 mitzvot remain for the 10 cancels 10. So rather, even a perfect tzaddik who has transgressed only one sin, it is as if he had burned the entire Torah. So what he's saying, I, I remember in Colombia, <clears throat> they used to say that whatever a person does with the hand, he raises with his elbow, you know? Like he does a kind deed, and then he goes and does something that is wrong, and then, so he's erasing it with his elbow. So according to the, to the Tomer Devorah, this is not real. This is not true. It's not like a person does a mitzvah, and then he goes and steals a bank. 
and then Hashem takes away the mitzvah from him. It's two separate accounts. There's a, 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 an account for the mitzvot, and there's an account for the um, for the averas, for the for the sins. So if a person is doing good, the bad that he does in this world is not going to take away from the good good that he has done, and the reverse is also true. So the um, so he says that it, it is a great kindness Hashem does for the righteous that he does not subtract because mitzvot are very important and they ascend upon heaven to Hashem. How can they be canceled by the sins? The punishment of a sin is from the portion of Gainon, despicable, while the reward of the mitzvot is from the honorable radiance of the Shehina. How could one cancel the other? Rather, Hashem punishes for the sin and he rewards for the mitzvot. It's two separate accounts. You, whatever sin you do in this world, you go and you pay for that. And whatever mitzvot you do in this world, you're going to have the reward of the mitzvot. So this is expressing the attribute of he suppresses our sins. The sins do not prevail before him like mitzvot. Rather, rather he suppresses them so they will not ascend and enter. Although his providence extends over man's uh, deeds, both good and bad, even so, he does not suppress the good deeds, and they ascend high above, where they combine with one another to form a spiritual structure and garment of honor. So I remember many years ago, I, I read this book called The, <clears throat> the Garden of Emuna by Rabbi Arush, and he has a story of a man in this book that talks about this man that was very bad. He was very evil, very evil, terrible guy. And it happens to be that he dies and the Hebra Kalisha is preparing his body for burial. And amongst the Hebra Kalisha, these are the, the society of the people that go and bury the dead. It's a big mitzvah. There's one man in this uh, Hebra Kalisha that had a lot of problems with this, the deceased and he hated him very much and he comes and he hits the corpse. He starts uh, hitting the corpse and um, eventually the guy gets buried, whatever, and the, the man that hit the corpse, he goes to sleep that night and suddenly in his dream, this man that had died, that they had just buried, appears to him. He's radiant, 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 like light is emanating from him. And he's like, where are you? So the, the man um, is going to tell him like he's in, 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 in the highest of the highest in, in Gan Eden. So the man uh, gets very scared and he says to him, he wakes up. And so when he wakes up, he runs to the rabbi's house. He knocks on the door and he tells the rabbi, look, and he tells, he confesses to him, look, when we were burying this man, that he was such, such a bad person, like he was a very bad person. I couldn't contain myself and I did something horrible and I hit the corpse and, uh, and it happened to be that I'm sleeping and he appears to me and he's radiant and I'm very scared. So the rabbi says to the man, you know what? Well, he's going to come again. He's going to come again to you. When he comes back, tell him to come to and speak to me. I want to speak to him. So eventually he goes back to sleep and the guy appears again in the dream and he tells him look I, I i can talk to you but the rabbi wants to talk to you go to the rabbi so the the rabbi dreams with this man the man appears in his dream and he's radiant 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 and the rabbi says where are you where are you how come you're so radiant you were such a bad guy where are you so he says look i don't know i came i died i came here they were receiving me with um with uh, festivities, they took me to this place, this gorgeous place, there, a party that was uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, receiving me, and, and I don't know, and he says, he says, uh, I, I, I asked, what am I doing here? I was such an evil man, I should be in going on, I should be in the purgatory. So the, someone, the angel or someone there said to him, look, when you were a younger guy, you were a lifeguard in a beach in, in the Haria, there in Israel. And what happened? 
there was this young boy that was swimming and he was uh, drowning and you saved his life. And it happened to be that this young man that you saved the life, he became a very great rabbi. And today he has a huge yeshiva and he's teaching Torah to hundreds of people. And so, because you saved his life, you saved that life of, that, of this very famous rabbi, all the merits of the Torah that he's been learning and teaching and all these people that have been learning with him and teaching and it goes on and on, the ripple effect that's never ending, all this is accredited to you because you saved the life. So this is what it's telling us here that <clears throat> that every mitzvah we do is so precious. We don't even understand the, the, the effect of a mitzvah. We don't even understand where it can get to. And eventually Hashem suppresses the sins. He, okay, he cleanses whatever he needs to clean, but the mitzvah that a person does in this world, it creates a very great commotion up there. And it's, 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 it's not taken away because the person did the uh, boo-boos in his life. So, so the, we see that the, the definition of the attribute is that when a person has benefited from someone and then been harmed, he should forgive the bad that was done to him, even if he has the right to sue the person in the base deem for the harm, he should not let his anger over the events sit in his heart. This is huge. What it's saying is that we should never forget the good that someone does for us. You know, people err, people do, do things, sometimes they do stupidity, they do things they shouldn't do, they act in weird ways, in reckless ways, but we should always keep in mind the kindness that this person has done to us. This is called hakaras hatov, gratitude. And, and, and a sense of appreciation for the good that that person has given you. And one should not say, true, he has done my, me favors in the past, but he has also harmed me. So what good are his favors? It's like, yeah, lo que hace con la mano lo borra con el codo. What he does with his hand, he erases with the elbow. Like that Colombian saying, but rather we should be godly, we should act like Hashem would act, we should find some way to forgive the harm and push it out of our mind while remembering the favors, letting them outweigh the harm. You know, it doesn't mean you have to go back and become this person's best friend. That, this is not what it's saying. What it's saying is that try to go to that place where this person did kindness to you and forgive. Be a forgiving person, push the harm away, and just connect to the goodness that this person did to you, and suppress the sin. And this, this will do the same for you. Because everything we do for others, Hashem uh, uh, mirrors, it, he, it's, a, it's a reciprocal relationship. He will do the same for us. So, so the attribute of suppressing sin and elevating mitzvot in their place is in direct opposition to our human nature. The human nature is to hold grudges, be upset with a person forever, forget the kindness that that person did. And this is very common. You have a friend that's been your friend all your life. Suddenly this person does a boo-boo on you and you just forget in one second all the goodness that came with the friend and you only concentrate on the one bad thing he did to you. So with each succeeding generation, the sense of I deserved it becomes more prevalent in the world. When a boss is late, um, a flood of complaints, letters descend upon the boss company. But when the boss comes on time, does anyone ever remember to say thank you? Like, yeah, we, we, are, you are, we, 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 are, we tend to complain and complain and complain, but we're never every day saying thank you, he came out on time. Thank you for coming and picking me up. But the one day in 365 days that this guy came late, that day people complain. So we use the bad incidents to shape our opinions of other people, brushing under the carpet the good deeds that these people do and the favors they have done for you. And the attribute of suppressing sin requires us to change our outlook uh, on people 
it's, it's just to reframe, it's to change the glasses, so to speak, and to put the spotlight on their good qualities. By considering how Hashem himself has this quality and for, focuses on the good of, of, of a person, Hashem is always trying to look for what good thing we do, right? Uh, even after that, they're all, only looking at what, what did this person do to deserve Gan Eden, then we will be able to live in a better, brighter world where people will be kinder and more forgiving and less grudge, less grudges, less resentment, less um, envy, less everything. Because if we, we, we look at people with a good eye, then that's, that's how it's going to be. So, so he continues explaining here, since sins come from the forces of evil, they are not allowed to ascend to the holy places in heaven. Rather, Hashem suppresses the sin, and thus each person has two accounts in heaven. We have uh, an account for the mitzvot and an account for the averas. There are two separate banks, bank accounts, and, uh, and where one goes doesn't go the other one. So the um, Hashem has this separate accounting, and this is the, the greatest kindness that he can show. The great pleasures in this world has to offer cannot compare to the reward that a mitzvah will bring to you in the world to come in many, many years. So, so this is something to remember. This is something that we need to keep in mind when we're wronged by people that we love. Like, okay, let it pass, let it pass, let it pass. Look like this. I remember my uncle, may he rest in peace. He used to call me uh, when I had gotten married, newlywed, and he used to give me advice. And he would always tell me, Margie, what goes in here, let it go out through here. What goes into one ear, let it go through, out through the other ear. And he would always tell us, never go to sleep upset one with the other. Like, let it pass, let it pass, let it be, and, 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 and concentrate on what's good in the person, concentrate on what this person has given you, and not in one or two wrongings that he does in your life. So the, there's an example in the Midrash, in the Tanakh, that tells us that Hashem showed Moshe a prophetic vision of Kabbalah's HaTorah, before it occurred, so he could see with his own eyes the loyalty and greatness of Ben Israel. However, Hashem did not foreshow for him a vision of the golden calf. So he showed him how the people were going to be in such an elevated state when they were going to receive the Torah, how everybody was eager to receive the Torah. They were like beating like one heart. They said, Nasevenishma, we will do and then we will learn, and how people were in such a high spiritual state. And Hashem didn't show Moshe the vision of, of the moment that the people were gonna sin because he didn't want to, to blur the moment of, of the giving of the Torah. And he wanted to remind, remind Moshe, this is what's important. You know, people fall down and they repent and they do Teshuvah and, and then you go your way. It's important that people should repent and should ask for, 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 for uh, to be able to be forgiven. But, uh, <clears throat> but uh, Hashem in this way didn't show this, this sin because his love for them remained. But you, Moshe, cannot see both events together. You can only see one. Hashem cannot show you both events because we're, we're very far away from God. And Hashem already chose to reveal to him Kabbalah's HaTorah. Why not reveal the sin of the golden calf? Furthermore, what message did Hashem mean to impart by telling Moshe that he could see both at once? It is not obvious that Hashem, Hashem sees everything at, at the same time. So according to what the Midrash explains and what we've learned from this uh, attribute is that that Hashem wanted to preserve and nurture Moshe's love for the Jewish people. He wanted to show him first the goodness of the Jewish people. So at the moment of the boo-boo of the golden calf, 
he could be reminded of the goodness of the Jewish people. So Hashem, on the other hand, could see both sides. He could see both. He can see the good and he can see the bad. But anyways, if he has both together, he can love the, the Jewish people. He has the ability to, to love us. Um, and that's why we have to learn to emulate Hashem in this attribute so we can always remember the goodness in everyone and we don't concentrate on their flaws, we can con concentrate in their virtues. I remember a story to finish off here of a woman that was desperate with one of her sons. He was a very annoying child and she went to the psychologist to help her deal with this child that was a little problematic. And, um, and the psychologist, very intelligent woman, she said to her, but tell me, what good attribute does your child have? And she says, I cannot think of one good thing this, this child does. I can't think, everything is terrible. I'm all day reprimanding him, all day. So she says, okay, I'm gonna give you homework. I want you to go home and I want you to look for one good thing that this child does, okay? So the mother at 6.30 in the night, she says to the children, okay, children, it's time to go to bed. I need everybody to go and wash their teeth. And suddenly the first child that runs to wash his teeth is this problematic child. She says, wow, he went to wash his teeth. She does the second night the same, he runs to wash his teeth. And she realizes this guy always runs to wash his teeth. He's the first one washing his teeth, but he had so many, so many bad qualities that she never realized he had this one good quality. So she goes back to the psychologist a week after, she says, I found one good thing about my kid. She says, what did you see? He says that when I asked him to go and wash her teeth, he's the first one running to wash his teeth. So the psychologist said to the woman, okay, now I want you to praise him every time that he goes to wash his teeth. So now every time this child goes to wash his teeth, the mother is saying, oh, Yosele, I'm so proud of you. You're the first one to run and wash your teeth. I'm so proud, I'm so proud. Suddenly, other excellent things started popping out from this child. Excellent qualities she hadn't realized. And suddenly she's looking at all the good that he has and the bad became small. So this is the same way that Hashem looks at us. He's always looking at what good thing we have. So whatever is not so good, it becomes smaller. But if we concentrate on the bad qualities of people and we're only looking at what bad things they do, then it's very hard to see the good. So I, 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 I give you a bracha and a Hashem to you and to me that we should always have a good eye, an eye tov, a good eye for others that we're able to see other people with love, with pride, with seeing the goodness they have. And, and in that way, then nobody's gonna be bad because nobody sees it. So remember, live a little higher. Thank you.